Hi everyone, Jim Bartles here with another edition of Something Artsy. My pleasure to be your host for the program. Tamara Firth from the Grand Center for Arts and Culture will join us here in just a moment. I want to let you know again, Something Artsy is produced by State Street Theater. It's a way to collaborate with other arts and culture entities and people in the area, sharing interesting events and information with our viewers like you. Artsy itself is a collaboration with New Alm Access Cable TV, New Cat as we know it, whose filming of this show makes it possible. State Street Theater is grateful to the City of New Alm for partnering with us as well. And thanks to the Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council for their grant to make something artsy possible. Tamara, we've got a busy schedule to talk about again in terms of Grand Center for the Arts and Culture, located right on Minnesota Street, downtown New Alm. Let's get at it. Uh, let's talk about the music that's coming up. All right. Yes, we've got a full schedule for November. Um, again, Friday nights from 7 to 9. We have live music in our cabaret. Uh, the music is free and all are welcome. So starting off the month, we've got Sarah and the Hooligans and along with the group Machico. And these are both groups out of Mankato, well known and loved. Um, they bring kind of an eclectic uh, vibe to the music. So kind of a fun group, very talented musicians. Um, after that, we've got on the 10th, Nate Boots, who again is a singer-songwriter from North Mankato and I think well known and loved in the region. And again, he brings a lot of his own original music along with folk music, um, some familiar tunes. Gotta love the name, Nate Boots. Uh, yes, yep. yes, he's great. And um, then we've got a little jazz coming on the 17th. So Easy Jazz will be performing and they too uh, have performed many times in the cabaret, well loved and uh, always a good time. And on the 24th to finish off the month, um, that'll be after the Parade of Lights. So on that Friday night, We'll have music following the Parade of Lights with Phil Burbig, and he too is a crowd pleaser. He plays um, an eclectic mix, so some Americana, some folk, um, just a real fun variety. So Again, 7 to 9 on Friday nights, so it's easy to make it part of your evening and still have other things if you want to do later on, you can. Exactly, All yes. Right. And uh, the only music outside of Friday night that we have is our open mic night series with Molly and Sunny Boy, and that'll be on November 2nd. We usually have it later in the month, but our, our hosts were on vacation later, so we bumped it up to November 2nd. So we'll be looking for that early in the month. Film series coming up on November 16th, I believe. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so again, um, the grant has been working in cooperation with the New Ulm Film Society, and we're bringing the film The Incident at Ogallala from 1992. It's a documentary. Um, that was set on the uh, reservation and it just again it's narrated by Robert Redford um, and it's a documentary about an incident that happened out on the reservation and maybe wasn't followed up to the point that it should have been as far as investigation. So that is an hour, hour and a half? What's yep, like? yep, usually about an um, hour and a half, two hours. So, okay. And that film, again, a lot of our um, entertainment starts at 7 o'clock, so that film will run from 7 to 9, and it's usually followed up with some discussion. So we like to partner with the Film Society because they bring that insight to the filmmaking and uh, the history. If you just joined us, Tamara Firth is our guest. She's with Grand Center for Arts and Culture, talking about things coming up in November, including a children's painting class. Yes, we have our monthly paint class with Rhonda Johnson. Uh, she works with the kids. Uh, it'll be November 18th, a Saturday morning from 10 to noon, and always has fun, creative projects for them to do. A lot of times it's painting on canvases. Um, sometimes they paint on other things, like in October it was pumpkins, but uh, she brings a lot of fun. To the, to the event and kids have a good time. So can sign up for that class online if interested. 10 to noon. 10 to noon and it's for kids um, ages kindergarten and up, so. All right, kindergarten on up. Uh, four Pillars with Greg Wilkins. Uh, tell us about that. So Greg Wilkins is a professor at Mankato State University and uh, he's an artist. His work will be on display through November 17th and the title of his exhibit is Trying to Get Home. Um, Greg Wilkins himself is from a multi-ethnic, multi-racial family, and so he's highlighting some of the challenges of some of the minority populations um, around the world. He spent a lot of time in refugee camps um, and just in inner cities, and so 
tries to communicate that um, their story through his work. And that's on through November 17th? Yes, through this November 17th, because following this exhibit is our big Artscape exhibit, our annual juried art show um, in its 15th year already. And that'll be opening actually in December. But what's impor important to note is that we will be collecting the artwork because um, for Artscape, we ask local and regional artists to submit their work. And we'll be picking, you can drop off your work um, November 18th from 11 to 4, and then November 20th and 21st from 9 to 5. So artists can bring their work to display in our art show. Tamara, regular hours for the Grand Center for Arts and Culture. When, when you open, what days? Yes, that's a good point um, because we're going through a transition right now, so our hours have changed a little. Um, we are typically closed on Monday to the public, and so our hours run Tuesday through Friday um, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and then on Saturday, our gift shop is open from 11 a.m to 4 p.m. And if someone needs to see us outside of those hours, we just encourage them to contact us at the Grand because we can be flexible. But those are the hours we're open um, consistently to the public. How do they get a hold of you if they want to contact you? So yes, our phone number is 507-359-9222 or they can email uh, at the Grand. So, and my email would be programming at the Grand very good. Again, standard hours, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 3, Saturday. The gift shop's open 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. What kind of things in the gift shop? So we have all kinds of things from local and regional artists. We have um, jewelry, we have woodwork, we have um, cards, you know, that from photography. Yeah. We have a large collection from things created in our cellar press, our print studio. So we have prints, we have cards, um, we have books from local authors, we have clothing, um, all kinds of things. So yeah, I know it almost, it's like that holiday season is sneaking up on us. So come check it out for some unique gift ideas. Tamara Firth, anything else you want to mention before we wrap up? Um, I think, let's see, we've got one other class to mention in November on the 11th. It's our block carving and hand printing on bandanas. So it's kind of a fun, uh, class that introduces people who maybe aren't familiar with printmaking just kind of uh, in a, a fun way and that's great or excuse me ages 12 and up so you can check out our website for that and then also as you walk by the smallest museum we've got a, phot a photography display um, in there so through December in the small museum in the small museum outside on yes. the sidewalk yes very good. That'll be up through December, and then we'll put it away for the winter just because um, the elements can be harsh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so. Well, that's an update on the Grand Center for Arts and Culture. Thank you, Tamara. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. Yes. Well, it's a fun place. If you haven't stopped by the Grand Center for Arts and Culture, please do so. It's a great asset for the city of New Ulm. Along with Tamara Perth, Jim Bartles here, and that's another segment on Something Artsy. Here's another segment of Something Artsy coming your way here on from the, it's produced by the State Street Theater, and it's a way to collaborate with other arts and culture entities and people in the area, sharing interesting events and information with our viewers like you. Artsy itself is a collaboration with New Elm Access Cable TV, or as we know it, New Cat, whose filming of this show makes it possible. The guys are back in the production room right now, and we appreciate them. State Street Theater is grateful to the city of New Elm for partnering with us, and also our thanks to Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council for their grant to make something artsy possible. So what are we talking about in this segment? Sweet Haven Tonics is a business that's fairly new in downtown New Orleans, and Leah Trelevin is with us right now. And Lisa, welcome aboard. Good to have you on Something Artsy. Thank you, thanks for having me. All right, so let's get some history. How, how does the uh, Sweet Haven Tonics come about? It's right downtown, uh, close to where the old Ben Franklin was and yep. her burgers and so forth. What's the background? So we just opened the retail location on April 1st. So it's just about six months old, yeah. but the business itself started about two and a half years ago. It was during COVID. I was a seventh grade English teacher at Newell Middle School, teaching seventh graders a love of literature via Zoom, which was just as much fun as it sounds. <laughs> and uh, my hobby that I kind of took up during that time was making, learning how to make great cocktails. And my family loved this new endeavor of me learning to make great cocktails. And so when COVID kind of accelerated and we couldn't get together, 
They said they missed me, but maybe my cocktails a little more. So <laughs> Sweet Haven Tonics was really a, a gift to them for Christmas that year. I wanted to take all the fresh ingredients and combinations I'd put into great cocktails for them, and I bottled it so that they could make the cocktails simply on their own. So the whole concept behind Sweet Haven Tonics is craft cocktails made simple. So you can take Sweet Haven Tonics and spirits, mix them together, give it a stir, and you have got a high-end craft cocktail. Craft cocktails made simple. That's it. Sweet Haven, where's the name come from? Uh, Sweet Haven, I moved a little bit when I was growing up. And when my family moved to New Ulm, Minnesota, my brothers and I were like, what's the name of that place? New Ulm. Yeah. And my mom just said, how about we just call it Sweet Haven? Let's call where home is Sweet Haven. So Sweet Haven has always been home. All right, little tip of the hat to mom on that. Yeah, one. thanks, That's mom. Great. <laughs> uh, food served there. A little bit, uh, we know a little bit about the beverages, but beverages and food that's served at Sweet Haven Tonics. So we, of course, have a great array of cocktails that all incorporate some of the concentrates into them. So you can try a cocktail, and then we sell all the things you can go home and make it yourself. Yeah. Uh, we also have mocktails. So most of our cocktails we can serve non-alcoholic so if you drink or you don't drink there's something for you and we have a nice selection of wine some great craft beer and then for food we have got a great snack mix and some charcuterie boards all right so again mocktails are included mocktails are included and i think that's really important it's such a growing need and a lot of people who are choosing not to drink or can't drink for various reasons and for them to feel included in that you know, the gathering together and connecting with each other without just having to hold a soda or a water. I think feels special. Leah's with us from Sweet Haven Tonics, located right downtown on Minnesota Street. Um, let's find out a little bit about music. We're talking November right now, and a little bit about your music variety that you've got coming in. Yeah, so we started doing live music every Thursday. So if you uh, want to come down. We always have a variety of artists that play from 7 to 9 p.m. We usually have some sort of um, drink special as well at that time, but um, we've had a great outpouring of artists and musicians who want to come and have a space to play where people are connecting, and so we've had some really wonderful talent and some really special evenings there. So it's going to continue. We have our calendar booked out almost through January. Okay. So we have a couple weekends right now, or Thursdays right now, that aren't full right around Christmas because it's tricky to get yeah. people to perform at that time. But we're really excited to continue it on for the next few months and into the future. Quickly, names of uh, musicians who are coming in. Uh, we have Chris Castata. Castaneda. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. I didn't say that right. Um, and then we have Unicello. We've got a trio coming in. Uh, we're going to have posters up around town where we uh, list all of the musicians that we have for the upcoming months so that you can find out who's coming. And even if you don't know who's playing, it's a great place to stop in on a Thursday night and have a great music experience. All right. So I got to be honest here with, with Leah. Um, I've not been in for a cocktail. However, I stepped in, I had a couple of minutes, I stepped in and just kind of looked around. Someone welcomed me right away. Good. I thought that was really good. Good. Um, but describe the atmosphere as you would call it at Sweet Haven Tonics. Uh, well, it, it is a cocktail lounge, so there's soft seating. It's all about having these small kind of intimate spaces where you can come and have a conversation with those around you um, where you don't have to yell over the music. You know, where you can really enjoy each other's company. So it has a cocktail lounge feel. There's lots of light and plants. Something I'm really proud of is that it's kind of closing up that season, but the front window's all open all the way, so it's an open air experience as well. And of course, we have a great patio this year too to sit outside when we get That's those right. get beautiful the, uh, Minnesota the or whatever days. They call it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's fun. very uh, open and welcoming, and we encourage people to use the space almost like you would like a coffee shop. Come in and bring your book, or bring your work, or come in with some friends. It's Website, Facebook. So we have at SweetHavenTonics.com. You can find our menu there. You can find the upcoming musicians and events. We have some exciting pop-up shops with a new uh, vendor called Luca Books. So she's going to have a bookstore downtown, and 
until her space is ready every Monday and Wednesday she's gonna bring in some of her offerings of books and have an opportunity to sell those in our space address we need to have that in your hours so we are at 116 North Minnesota Street so in part of the old Herberger's building right. and we are open Monday Tuesday and Wednesday from noon until 8 um, Thursday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and third, and then Thursday we're open from noon till 10. And then we just extended Friday and Saturday, so now we're open on those days from noon until 11. So we're staying open a little later on those weekends. All right, so once again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, noon to 8, Sweet Haven Tonics, downtown New Ulm. Thursday, noon to 10, Friday, Saturday, noon till 11. That's right. Anything else, otherwise we need to wrap up, Leah? I think that, that covers it all. Thanks for having me. All right, did I get... Tree Levin. Tree Levin. Tree Levin. <laughs> Lots of E's in there. <laughs> Tree Levin and Leah's with us. And best of luck with the new business. It's great to invest in New Ulm. Good to have you. you here. And you've been in New Ulm for a number of years and known your father for a long time up at the college as well. So, Leah, thanks so much. That's going to wrap up this issue, this edition of Sweet Haven Tonics with us on Something Artsy. We've got another edition of Something Artsy coming your way right now. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about New Ulm Public Library. Leroy Harris will join us in just a second. He's the Programming and Technology Services Librarian. Something Artsy, produced by State Street Theater. And Artsy is a collaboration with New Ulm Access Cable TV, the new cat folks whose filming of this show makes it possible. State Street Theater, also grateful to the city of New Ulm for partnering with us and thank you to Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council for their grant to make something artsy possible. Well, I know a short time ago we talked also, Bill, Leroy, excuse me, about uh, things going on at the library. And right. let's get right at it. Um, on Mondays, story time with Miss Catherine. That's right. So uh, taking a couple uh, weeks off here, but story time is going to come back in uh, starting on November 6th uh, in the morning. And um, every Monday morning uh, at 10.30, you can come in, uh, stories, songs, it's geared towards about three to six years old. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, every Monday through, through November, uh, we'll have that going. Again, starting November 6, 10.30 in the morning, geared for three to six year olds. That's on Monday, story time. That takes us to Wednesday is the pajama party story time. That's now right. this sounds good. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Pajama party story time. You get to wear your pajamas. You get to bring like uh, your favorite stuffed animal friend. Uh, and it's at, uh, at 6.30 in the evening uh, on, on Wednesdays. Uh, it's gonna start back up on uh, November 8th and they will go all through November. Come, you know, it'll be dark by that point, I think maybe okay. <laughs> at 6.30. Yep. Uh, but uh, again, come for stories, come for songs, but more towards winding down at the end of the day. So if you've got kids or grandkids that, uh, you know, you want to help them relax, uh, get, get, out, uh, get out of it, then they can uh, come down to Pajama Party Story. 6.30 p.m., who does that? Uh, Miss before? Catherine does. Miss yeah. Catherine does also, yeah. great. Yeah. All right, let's uh, talk about Friends of the Library book sale, and that's in early November. Yes, so our annual uh, Friends of the New Home Public Library are doing their used book sale here in our meeting room. Uh, and it starts on November 2nd uh, at 5.30. That's the members only preview. So if you are a member of the Friends of the Library, um, you can do that, but you can also join at the door. Um, and uh, there, there's, a, there's an individual and a family price as well as like a lifelong uh, price for Friends of the Library. But that's on the 2nd from 5.30 to 7.30. But then on Friday and Saturday, anything goes. So you can come and uh, check out all of the great things. Uh, they've been working on it for months, getting it organized and it all goes towards benefiting um, and supporting the library in our programs. What hours are on the 3rd and 4th of November? Uh, on the 3rd, uh, it'll be available uh, while we're open, uh, so from 9.30 to uh, about uh, 7.30, because they want time to, to close up at the end of the night. And on uh, the 4th, that's Saturday, uh, it'll be start at 9.30 till noon, and then from noon until about uh, 2 or 3, uh, things are free. So, okay. but that's only if you want to carry a bunch of books and have a place to put them, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, please come down, uh, support the library, maybe find a really neat book uh, or two or five uh, and uh, have a good time. 
I should mention information on this also on the website. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, if you go to www.newhomelibrary.org and click on our library events button, you can see information on all of our events, including uh, events that require registration, like our regular children's programs. So. Leroy Harris is with us again, and we're talking about New Ulm Public Library, things they've got available. New Ulm Film Society, courtroom drama film series. That's right. So uh, they, we just in October finished up our series on the history of special effects. Uh, watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes was the last one there. Uh, and we're starting a new series in November. Uh, so the second Tuesday of each month. So uh, in November it'll be on the 14th at 6.30 uh, here in the meeting room. And we will be watching 12 Angry Men. Uh, so courtroom dramas, we're going to start with, with 12 Angry Men and, and we're going to end all the way in six months uh, with the social network, kind of moving forward in time with, with courtroom dramas there and, and how they've, they've shown things over the years. So. Second Tuesday of the month. Yep. And what time again? 6.30. 6.30. Okay, yep. so keep that in mind. Put it on your calendar. Let's talk about book clubs. Yep. So we've got our three uh, book clubs going, our Litwits Book Club, our History Book Club, and our Mystery Book Club. So the Litwitz Book Club, they meet the first Monday of the month at 6.30 in the evening up in our Fred Johnson room. Uh, and they're going to be discussing uh, Suzanne Woods Fisher's book, The Moonlight School, which is based on a true story uh, about a woman who uh, goes looking for her missing sister and ends up founding a night school in Appalachia to teach people how to read. Uh, and then our history book club uh, is going to be uh, discussing uh, The Wager by David Gran. He's the author of... Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, which is just made into a movie. Uh, but the wager is about uh, mutiny on, on a ship in the, uh, the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, and so that should be really interesting. History Book Club meets on the third Tuesday of the month uh, at 12 o'clock. And we're going to our winter location uh, for, for History Book Club. Instead of meeting here at the library, we meet over at the City Center Apartments at 115 South uh, Minnesota Street. Uh, but again, it's open to the public. We'd love to have you come and join the discussion, uh, and, and you can see us there. Uh, the Mystery Book Club meet on the last Monday of the month. Uh, so in November, is that the 27th? Yes. Uh, and they're going to be discussing, uh, I want to make sure I got his last name right, Peter Swanson's uh, Eight Perfect Murders. Uh, and that's a, a really interesting book about a guy who wrote this essay about his top picks for murder mystery books but then someone starts killing people off in the way that he, he said, and, and uh, so he has to figure out what's going on. Uh, so yeah, our, our book clubs are meeting. Please join them. Uh, they're open to the public. We'd love to have you come. I know there's other uh, memoir writing, chess club, art club, poetry group. Lots of things. Many on. different things there, mm -hmm. just briefly on those. Sure. Um, so art group meets uh, each Wednesday. Uh, they're gonna, their last meeting for the fall will be November 15th. But Wednesday afternoon from 1.30 to 3.30, come to the meeting room, bring an art project, chat, work on what you're, you're doing, needle working group uh, Wednesday mornings, uh, the first and third Wednesday of the month, uh, our memoir writing group first Monday of the month at uh, 10 in the morning, uh, up in our Fred Johnson room, and our genealogy club, they're doing a field trip in November, uh, on uh, November 7th, so they won't be reading on the, a meeting on their regular day, but on November 7th, which is a Tuesday, uh, in the afternoon at 2 o'clock, they're going to go over to the Brown County Historical Societies to meet with Darlin Archives and see what's, uh, what's new over at the archives. Fred Johnson, is that the same Fred Johnson that Johnson Park's named after? Yes, it is. All right, yeah, uh, quite a guy here in town. <laughs> and the new club that you were talking about, I'm, yeah. I'm going to let you try to okay, do yeah. the name on that Yeah, one. sure. So um, uh, for our teens, uh, Miss Catherine is, uh, has had requests for and interest in it, and so they're starting up an anime club uh, in November. And the anime club is going to be meeting, i got to make sure I got my, there we go, uh, on Tuesday, November 14th at 4 o'clock uh, in the library's meeting room. Uh, they're going to watch some anime, they're going to eat snacks, talk about anime and manga. So if you're interested in any of that uh, Japanese animation or art style, come on down, um, make some friends, eat some food. Uh, so that's, again, for teenagers. Uh, 12, 13 to, to 17, 18. All right, I'm not a teenager, teenager anymore, okay? Right. <laughs> but who's anime? So anime is a specific uh, style of uh, drawing animation yeah. that was first pioneered in Japan back in like the 1950s and 60s. It really started to gain more popularity in the 70s and 80s. And then it really came over to the United States uh, in the 1990s with shows like Pokemon 
and okay. uh, uh, things like and uh, Dragon Ball and things like that. And so uh, yeah, it's it's its own uh, style of, of art as well as uh, storyline tropes and things uh, that, that people enjoy. And anime that first starts on November 14th. That's right. What time? At 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, so check that out, Anime Club. Leroy, anything else you want to mention before we wrap up? Um, just come on down to the library. Oh, our uh, Civil War Roundtable. I should briefly oh, mention that. So yes. every, every month, the uh, Minnesota Valley Civil War Roundtable, they meet on the third Tuesday of the month at 6.30. Uh, we have a guest presenter coming in November, uh, Minnesota historian Gary Blessman, and he's gonna be talking about the different proclamations and executive orders that Abraham Lincoln did. So everybody has heard of the Emancipation Proclamation, but he made a lot of other ones too. Uh, and so he's gonna be sharing with us about those. So look forward to that. Is it a bow tie every day? Uh, almost every day. I think it's good. <laughs> I like bow ties, that's great. All right, Leroy Harris from New Orleans Public Library. Thank you. Lots of. So much material, but again, if they go to the website, mm -hmm. uh, org, yeah. and you'll find it and lots of items there. Along with Leroy Harris, Jim Bartles, that's another edition of Something Artsy. Something Artsy, coming your way here in New Orleans. Good to have you with us. We welcome you once again for another edition. We'll be talking to Amy Johnson in just a little bit. She's the director of Brown County Historical Society. I want to remind you that Something Artsy is produced by State Street Theater. It's a way to collaborate with arts, other arts and culture entities and people in the area, sharing interesting events and information with viewers. Artsy itself is a collaboration with Nuam Access Cable TV, whose filming of the show makes it possible. We are grateful to the City of New Orleans for partnering with us and also Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council for their grant to make something artsy happen. Jim Bartles here is your host. Amy Johnson is with us, Director of Brown County Historical Society. Let's get right at it. Uh, real, just a quick plug, uh, the History Book Club that's always meeting the first Wednesday of the month, right? Yes. So you could check out your books here at the library. They pull them aside and you can just go up to the front desk and tell them that you would like to do the selection for the month. Um, the sections are available. I think there's posters upstairs in the library, but then also on our website you can find that. What, Speaking of books, no, November 4th, yeah. book signing with Elroy Ubel, Nuom Outdoors Museum is the name of it. And Elroy, of course, has done so many neat things that he's written about for Nuom, but to share a little bit on that. So he's going to be in the annex that day. Um, it's also a shopping weekend, so if you're out and about and you're looking for the perfect gift for the holidays, Elroy is going to be in the annex from one to four that day. Um, if you already have purchased his book and you want it signed, you can bring it back and he'll sign it for you. Otherwise, he'll be there to sign the books as well. And if you haven't studied or heard people talk about the cemeteries, New Ulm and other places, but certainly in New Ulm, there's so much history that's there mm -hmm. within the monuments and the art on those or mm -hmm. the features on those. And that's part of what Elroy knows about. Yep, so he'll break down the symbolism of the monuments, a little bit of the history of the monuments, and the individuals that they belong to, the families they belong to. But, yep, the book is also available at the Brown County Historical Society Museum store as well, so stop by if you miss that day and that sounds something interesting to you. Yeah. Annual meeting coming up November 9th. Yes, the annual meeting is coming up. Matthew Carter, who is the executive director of the Dakota County Historical Society, is coming down to speak with us about POW camps in Minnesota. So if that is something that is interesting to you, please come join us. You are welcome to our <coughs> annual meeting. If you are a member or a non-member, you can still come. It's going to be at the New Ulm Country Club. And the social starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, dinners, which is a dessert buffet, is going to be at 6.30 and then business meeting is at 7, followed by Matthew Carter speaking on German POW camps in Minnesota. Ah, great. And again, November 9th. November 9th. Long Country Club, 6 p.m., the dessert and the program. The program, yep. All right. Very good. So Which is going to be interesting to be at the New Ulm Country Club because we're kind of casting a shadow on New Ulm's very own German POW camp. That's right. As close as we can get in November. Yeah, which is what, <laughs> part of Flandreau? Flandreau. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. got the group camp up there, sure. All right, we need to talk about the holiday open house. Yes. That's going to be uh, Parade of Lights. I'll be doing a broadcast on yep. that again on the radio and also on uh, NewCat. 
So right. tell us a little bit about the open house on that Friday the 24th. Okay, so it's all day long free admission. So from 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. free admission. But then from 4 to 8, we do have cider, um, holiday treats, some, some live music that will come and go. So if you're going down to the Parade of Lights, you're cold, you need a place to warm up, come on over to the museum. Um, we'll be there. The holiday open house with the Menzel Village. And this year is the 40th anniversary that the Menzel Village has been in the care of the Brown County Historical Society. So it's kind of a special one. Yeah. It's got over 600 pieces and it was donated to the Brown County Historical Society by Louise Menzel. So come check that out. Um, another thing that I want to mention about the whole holiday open house is we do have a guest curator exhibit that's going to be coming in to accompany this. And that is going to be Pearl uh, Roiger. Pat Roiger is her son. And Pearl handmade prominent New Ulm houses and business, like a holiday village herself, that's been in the Roiger home for many years. Uh, they have very, very kindly uh, this year decided that it's going to be the guest curator at the mm -hmm. museum. So you'll get to see the Menzel Village and then kind of flow right into the Roiger collection. So that should be really, really special because again, it is like prominent houses and businesses of New Ulm that she handmade. Great. All right, a couple other things, uh, the mammoth, mastodons, and more. Right. What, um, what's, what's, uh, I know, I know what the, the mammoths are, so tell me right. more. Okay, so um, years ago there was a por partial mammoth tusk that was found in the area. Uh, it came to the Brown County Historical Society and then it went to the Science Museum of Minnesota. For years they went through a process of stabilization. And this isn't, this is a Colombian mammoth, which is kind of interesting in itself. You know, you think woolly mammoths, but yeah. this, the, mammoth that was in this area at that time was a Colombian, so you can come learn more about that. But, um, so the paleontologists who have been working on the mammoth tusk are going to be coming down on Saturday, December 2nd, and they're going to bring some fossils from the Science Museum to accompany the fossils that we have at the Brown County Historical Society. And then at noon, they're going to be doing a presentation on the Ice Age in Minnesota, so in the annex. So if you can, come on down, um, learn more about mammoths. We also have some mastodon bones that have recently been found that are out at the Brown County Historical Society. Um, so 10 to noon, there's gonna be activities and treats. December 2nd. December 2nd, yep. and then noon to one will be the paleontologist presentation on the Ice Age here. Another kind of exciting thing, and hopefully this will all work out, is that we are right now getting the mammoth tusk carbon dated. So there may be a competition where people can guess what is the age of the mammoth tusk, and it will be revealed at the Mammoth Mastodons and More uh, events. Now, the tusk is up in the cities? The tusk is here now. The tusk has it been is here. here. Yep, in our care for a while. It's got its own case, it's got custom stands, this mammoth tusk is well cared for. So it's here, but you know, we're gonna just learn a little bit more about it. Well, that's gonna be, it's more than 200 years old. I'll just put that up, okay? <laughs> I All think right. that you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, one other thing, looking ahead a little bit. Yes. Saving your stuff. Now, I got a lot of stuff at my house. What's right. this all about? This is coming up actually in January. Right. So this is going to be a conservation specialist from the Minnesota Historical Society. And this is January 11th at noon at the Brown County Historical Society. And I know it's a little bit in advance, but I'm bringing it up because we have people coming into the museum frequently. And they said, oh, you know, I've got my mom's dress. I don't know how to properly care for it. Or... I've got these letters that were from my great great grandparents. I don't know what to do with it. And so. Photos. Yeah. Photographs. Yeah. So, a conservation specialist from the um, Minnesota Historical Society will be coming down to talk to us about how we can care for our stuff. Huh. So, between now and then, if you had any thoughts about getting rid of some of your stuff, please reconsider because you can come and learn how to take care of your stuff. All right, and you can find more information always at browncountyhistorymn.org. Right. Wow. Yes. Lots of things, interesting stuff. So good for our community, so good for the area as well. Yes. Again, it is the Brown County Historical Society, but open uh, to the public. And uh, your normal hours are? Uh, 
Tuesdays through Fridays from 10 to 4 and Saturdays from 10 to 3. And I also just want to say again, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for all of the volunteers that help us out with these events and our membership and just our supporters and people who attend our events as well. So thank you very much for that. We do greatly appreciate it. Is there a fee, a charge to get in? Um, for the museum itself, uh, seniors are $5 and adults are 7 children are... Four. Okay, and there's so much, there's so much in there, and so holiday time is a great time to be yep. in there as well. And that also includes um, time in the research library too. So the admission, yeah, you can go through the museum, but if you, you know, feel compelled to look into your own family history, we've got tons of resources there that can um, help you out with that. So. Amy Johnson, Brown County Historical Society, located right on Broadway, right in the center of town. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. Amy Johnson you. with us here. I'm Jim Bartles. That's another edition of Something Artsy. Something Artsy. We're back on the air, folks. Great to have you with us, and we thank you for being one of our viewers. Something Artsy, produced by State Street Theater. We're going to be talking about State Street Theater in just a little bit as well. Our thanks to a New Elm Cable TV Access, New Cat. The guys in the production room, they do a great job for us. They're filming and they help make this show available. And also State Street Theater is grateful to the city of New Ulm for partnering with us on this. And our thanks to Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council for their grant that makes something artsy possible. Let's talk with Lisa Besmer. Yes. Lisa is one of the board members for State Street Theater. Good to have you with oh, us. Nice to be here, Jim. I like being on this side. Sometimes I'm a host, Sometimes you're over here. Yes, yeah. I, you know, right. wherever I need to fill in, yes. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what your mission is on yeah. the board, things that you do. Right, so i born and raised in New Ulm. I love, love, love this town. And, um, you know, graduated, kept working here. I worked in banking. I was at Friends and Bank for 20 some years and then I joined those crazy ladies at New Ulm Real Estate about a dozen years ago and I, I love selling houses and seeing all the beautiful houses we have in town. Um, my number one thing in life though is being a mom. I have two great daughters, Brittany and Jenna, and then I've got four grandbabies. So I, I, I'm lucky that they're right around here and involved in all sorts of fun things with them. So, and when I'm not doing um, grandma duties or mom duties, which I enjoy the best, then I'm um, also on the Newham Area Foundation Board, um, ISDD Foundation Board, and of course, State Street Theater, so. Were you on United Way Board too for a I while? was, yes, I was, you know, we've been, yeah, we've been at this for so on long, we've yeah. been on United Way. Um, I was on Grand Center for Arts and Culture, the very, very first board. Um, when we didn't hardly, I mean, there was, KNUJ was upstairs yet at that time. Second um, floor. Yeah, second floor, so I was on that board. I was on uh, Junior Pioneers of Brown County Historical Society. I love this town. I mean, you know, you just, you just, any way you can help this town out, you just, yeah, I'll help. Yeah, so right. it's, it's fun, yeah. That's great. Let's, let's find out what's happening at State Street Yes, Theater. yes. Well, we just got done with a really fun month. So at the beginning of the month, we had Alma Medina, which was a South American music, and it was awesome. I mean, there was, I think there was at least 10, 12 people in that band, and they played great. We had a bunch of people out on the, dan out on the um, Fayette floor dancing, and it was really, really, their costumes, everything were really, really cool. We had a couple food trucks outside, so it was a really fun day. Um, and then we just also, um, we hosted um, Dan Jasperson. He's a graduate of MVL um, and also Bethany College. And since then he, he has developed a skill and he, um, he's a mentalist and an illusionist. So That's a different like, presentation oh my goodness, for State yes. Street. Yeah. We, I, yeah, I don't know that we've ever had it before, not since I've been yeah. on the board. So it was really interesting and I was kind of like, well, how did he do that? So he had a Saturday night show and then he had a Sunday, Sunday afternoon show um, also for just for our volunteers and, um, to, and then we had just had a little thank you for them, appreciation, because truly, again, without our volunteers, we would be nowhere. So we're really, really lucky to do that. So, um, so Dan had a great, great viewing, he got to see his mom and dad while he was home yeah. here in New Ulm. And um, also they had an opening act called The Cousins. It was Angie and Joy and they were musicians and they were great too. So, but, so that was last month and now we've got a really fun, fun month, fun couple months to go yet before something exciting happens and we'll talk about it at the end here. You've got a tribute band to come yes, in, don't yes, you? Yes, we do. 
Ab, Abba. Abba. We were we were discussing is it Abba or Abba? But we're going Abba. Yep. Abba sal Abba salutely fab. So it's a tribute band to to Abba. And so if you remember uh, in the 1970s, the music like Dancing Queen or SOS or Take a Chance on Me or Waterloo and of course the the musical Mamma Mia, all those those songs I've were. I've seen that. Yes. Uh, great, yeah. great show. So this show is scheduled to coincide with the uh, shopping opener and also the No Main Market. So it's going to be on Saturday, November 4th at 7 o'clock at State Street Theater. And we just think it's going to be a fun way to end the day. You know, if the guys are out hunting and they want to have some fun at the end of the day, this is going to be just fun. Um, we're also going to have a signature drink. It's called the Mamma Mia Sangria. So that's going to be fun. Um, tickets are $30 in advance and then $35 at the door. And you can get our tickets are, are usually always on sale at Hy-Vee, um, the Chamber of Commerce, and also you can go online to buy them. Or you can stop at the door seven, which is on the Washington side, and go in and purchase tickets at the State Street during the day also. For any of this, website to go to for yes. information would be what? StateStreetNewAlm.org. It's, yes, it's All great. Right. Yes, yes. StateStreetNewAlm.org. Right. Okay, there we go. And then also in November, we, so sometimes uh, we will rent our stage out to other people. So we've got two rentals. The community concert is bringing a world-renowned pianist. His name is Charles Albright to the stage on Friday, February 10th. And so the community concert members um, are able to come to this. And if you want any more information about becoming a community concert member, you need to contact Trudy Berenick, and her number is 766-0725. Again, Trudy Berenick at 766-0725. It's not too late to get tickets. They have several different shows throughout the school year, kind of. Um, so that's really, really fun. And then after that, our own New Alm Concord singers will be hosting a free will offering for a Christmas concert on Saturday, November 18th. And the community is invited to this free concert and perhaps you'd consider doing a free will offering or bringing some to the food shelf. And I mean, who doesn't want to listen to our, I mean, our, we're, we were lucky. I mean, how many places, how many towns have somebody uh, the ambassadors like what we have with the Concord Singers. The ambassadors of goodwill. Yes, they're great. Yes. I'm on my third year with them. Though. I know, and yeah. I love I love the new people that are, I mean, yeah. there's a whole bunch of new guys that are on and it's fantastic. I think it's eight new people in the last three years. After COVID uh, got out of here, yes. I think we've had eight new ones, including some of those are this year, so That's it's, it's right. good. Shout out to my classmate, Ron Force. It's, you know, way to go uh, yeah. class. Yeah. Well, so, he, I'll tell you, watch him when we're singing. He's He's got more yes. gyrations going. I swear he was a dancer at a disco place, you know? <laughs> I don't remember that happening, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's free on November 18th, yes, and, and again, donations fun. for Food Shelf. Yes, yeah. and it's going to be, are you practicing Christmas songs already yes, for we it? Yes, we are. You yes, are already? Yeah. Okay, so you've got a full lineup of, of songs. I know Christmas is part of it. Okay. I know there'll be other songs there as well. There will be other ones. But okay, yeah, good. It's, it is part of what's going to be presented that night, but okay. uh, there are others as well. Okay, I'm excited. I will be there. Then on Saturday, okay. November 25th, um, we are doing something completely different again. So that'll be the weekend of Thanksgiving. The evening will start with music from Laura Carrolls and Pete Klug. And if you have ever listened to them, they're just, they're really, really good. Following an intermission, we're gonna have by popular demand, our own, New Alm's own Audra Shaneman, who is also on the State Street Board. She's gonna return with a short comedy stint. And then there's another opening act. Um, and then it, uh, by a well-known Minnesota comedian, and then it is Jason Schomer, and he used to tour with Louis Anderson for many years. Oh, yeah? So he's going to be, I think it's going to be hilarious. So okay. that's going to be a fun, you know, if you just need to get the family out of the house on Thanksgiving weekend, I think that'll be great. And tickets are for sale also at those outlets that I had mentioned about. Okay, too, so. so check that out. That's on Saturday, November that's, 25th. Right, right. That's All right. right. That's right. Good stuff. Now, there's always plays that are coming up uh, yes. along the way. What about plays coming now, up at State Street Theater, Lisa Besmer? Yes, it is. So, Wendy Tuttle, who is our, she's just, she's just a great State Street veteran. She is directing a play called The Christmas Express, and she is there, busy, busy, um, with 
with rehearsals ready. So that will be Friday and Saturday, December 1st and 2nd, and then also a matinee on October, Sunday, October 3rd. So we want to clarify December 3rd. December 3rd, right. I'm sorry, yes, and then, yes. And then this is not the Polar Express, this is the Christmas Express, so it's a, basically a greeting card. And so you'll be reminded of the spirit of Christmas's past and a little nostalgia. And the cast is made up of several generations of, of people. And there's a gentleman that just started acting, just started acting, and he's 69 years old. And he is loving it. I'm, <laughs> I'm following him on Facebook. Um, Dick, I'm watching, and this is going to be great. It's a show that school age children and older and adults are just going to love it. It's going to be really neat. So, and then. Um, one that I am also looking forward to for getting in the Christmas spirit is years ago there was a person, um, if you had gone to our Lori Lyon Christmas extravaganzas back in the day, you'll remember this guy that was, he had this rich baritone voice and his name um, is Robert Robinson. And if you YouTube him, you are going to be blown away. He's got a beautiful voice. He is going to be performing um, a Christmas concert on December 9th. Usually he sings gospel music, so it'll probably be a mixture of Christmas and gospel. But it'll be December 9th, and tickets are on sale already. Tickets are $25 in advance and $30 at the door, and he is going to be good. It's going to be really, really neat. You've got to YouTube him because I, I didn't recognize the name right away and when I YouTubed him when we were discussing about who was going to be coming he's really great. Yeah. This, this kind of show in the cities would cost an awful lot more. Exactly so. and that's where this guy is from he's yeah. from the metro just yeah. like the the ABBA they're from the metro and also some, uh, a couple of them are from Britain also so we're really getting some okay. really great acts here too. Lisa Bessmer is with us from State Street Theater she's on the board what else is coming up before the end of the year? Well then after Robert Robinson blows the house down, we are going to like do something with the house. We're ripping out all the seats. It, so say goodbye to all the hard wooden chairs. Um, it's going to be great. So mid-December, um, the theater is gonna go dark until January, end of January. And during that time, we're gonna be sprucing things up we're going to be dismantling all the seats and we're going to be replacing them with 700 matching cushioned seats, both downstairs and upstairs. So all the seats, wow. every, even the blue ones will come out um, and then the, the runways will be carpeted. It's, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to actually match um, the persona of the whole theater. It's just going to all jive together. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Because of that, we also had to expand our sprinkling system because we're making some changes within the theater, so then that uh, sparked the fire marshal for, for making some changes. Um, and also we're adding some lighting and also some railings to the balcony, which is gonna be really, really Good. kind of yeah. nice also. So we are, we are still in the middle of our, not in the middle, but on the tail end of our capital campaign, we've already raised $600,000 because our area is extremely generous. We need 100,000 more to wrap this capital campaign up. So um, if you are at all interested, please call the State Street or, or just call one of us and we'd gladly yeah. talk to you. Um, and we also, this month, we're just wrapping it up, we're gonna be having a different kind of a driveway. So you know what, when you come in this Washington Street side and you come in, and if you want, especially if you wanna pull in and drop somebody off, and if somebody pulls in behind you, you're really bottlenecked. You can't back up yeah. again. So we're actually going to have where you can drive in and drop somebody <coughs> off and then drive right back out again. So it'll be, so we're losing two parking spaces, but we really think it's going to be well worth not having that exit right away okay. also. So we are in the midst of that. So yeah, we're really excited. It's going to be great. Busy schedule. Yeah. Lots of stuff. State Street, New Alm .org, That's right. right. That's where That's you can right. find all the information in there. Lisa, anything else? Otherwise, I think that I think that's it. And we thank you every when you host. We just we just thank Jim for his volunteering. Also, you're so welcome. There's a lot of people that do this, and, yes, and it's, it's great. Uh, it's just we appreciate it. One of the things we can do to help out. So mm -hmm. that's great. And I'm semi-retired, mm -hmm. so it's kind of fun to do this as well. Sure. So that sounds good. Lisa Besmer, State Street Theater. That's a little update, and we are coming your way on something artsy. It's another edition of Something Artsy. Hi everyone, Jim Bartles here as your host. Sarah Wormka, President and CEO of New Alm Chamber of Commerce will join us in just a little bit. 
something artsy produced by State Street Theater. Our thanks to them. And it's a, it's a nice way of bringing together arts and culture entities and people in the area, all of those things that we hope that you will find them interesting. And we thank you for being our viewer as well. State Street Theater is uh, filmed by New Cat, New Ulm Area Access Cable Television. Our thanks to them as well. And the city of New Ulm is one of our partners in doing this. Thank you very much. And also Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council, they give us a grant to help make this happen. And we know there's a lot of people that view and enjoy watching. So Sarah Warmka, we're going to talk about New Ulm Chamber activities. Uh, I've been involved at the Chamber in one way or another for a long time. And it's so important to have that involvement within the community, but also the things that the Chamber does are so special. So let's talk about the shopping opener. That's always a big deal coming up. It is, yes. Always held the first weekend in November. Deer hunting. Deer hunting, exactly. Yep. And, and you know, we're pretty sure that New Ulm's the OG, <coughs> the original town that came up with the shopping opener concept. Um, but other towns have done it since then, but obviously New Ulm's the best, right? Of course. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so the Gnome Made Market is happening that weekend, you know, where there's shops and sales and artisan crafts for sale all, of, all over town, I think 17 different locations. Um, then our shops and boutiques and specialty shops have extended hours. They often have refreshments and different things. Um, lots of them are already decorated. We encourage the businesses to be decorated by then because it just kicks off our holiday shopping season. So again, look at that deer hunting weekend, mm -hmm. uh, November 3rd. That's the one to look at, the shopping open and all these good. All right, there's a, a business, I'll call it competition, yeah. for best looking decorated businesses, but it's got a much different name. We don't have all the details, but maybe just tease this a little bit. Yeah, so we're calling it the first annual festive facade foray. <laughs> Alliteration, here we go. Alliteration. So, you know, it's a decorating contest, yep. right? We're, so we're trying to encourage our businesses to decorate and, and get in the festive spirit just to contribute to the overall ambiance of the town, you know, Christmas town and all of that. So businesses have can decorate and they can let us know that they want to be on the list for judging and voting. And then, and then we're asking the public to vote. So uh, starting uh, Parade of Lights Day, so November 24th, the public can vote until uh, New Year's Eve. So that whole time then they vote. And then the top three businesses that win get some get some chamber dollars. Very good. And again, voting will start around that Thanksgiving yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so watch for that. Hot topics. I've gone to many of these. I've enjoyed going to these uh, great topics over the years. And what's coming up with hot, hot topics with the chamber in November? So we're going to have our next Hot Topics on November 3rd. Uh, it's going to start from at 11.30, go till 1. It's at Turner Hall. And the topic is energy programs for every business. So, you know, the, the push for green and, and, you know, sustainable models. There's a lot of our businesses that are already really embracing that. Um, but also, you know, what programs and rebates are available? Derek Nelson from the PUC is going to be our main presenter for that. Um, we hear from businesses, you know, they get like a new air compressor, they get a new whatever or something, and they don't know that there was a rebate that they could have yeah. gotten in advance. And so Derek's really going to outline that, the step-by-step, -step, and how you find different rebates and programs and how you can partner with the PUC. We're also going to have um, someone from Minnesota WasteWise, which is a program for the Minnesota Chamber. They're going to be down talking about what they offer, and they do free consultations for businesses with 10 employees or less. They'll come in and do evaluations and, and rec make recommendations as well. So they're going to be there to share. And then since we're at Turner Hall, Andrea Betker from Turner Hall is also going to talk about some of the initiatives that they've done recently to, to go that are saving them costs as well as making them more energy efficient. So it should be a really great program. Noon starts at noon. So it's at eleven thirty. Eleven thirty, yes. and again, meal available yep. there. Yep, burger bar. Okay, can't go wrong. Yeah, that's good. So again, it's coming up on November third. Mm -hmm. uh, it says here, loyal to loyal, New Ulm holiday passport. Loyal what's, to what's, local. What's, local to oh, yes. that's right. Yes. Local. All right, let's talk about it. Let's. So you know, obviously, we are a big proponent here in New Ulm of shopping local, yeah. and obviously, everyone in, in in this community just really feels like they support our small businesses and our local businesses, which they should, because yep. you're not seeing Amazon sponsor the baseball team. You know, it's, it's our small businesses That's that right. are really doing it. And so we have this new program called Loyal to Local Holiday Passport. So what it is, is you can get a passport, you can pick it up at the chamber or at any of the 30 some participating businesses. And then it starts November 3rd, which is shopping opener weekend. It goes through November 25th, which is Small Business Saturday. And any purchases made at those businesses between that time, you can get stamps to fill up your passport. 
Uh, it's $300 total to fill up a passport. You can fill as many as you want up, and then you just have to turn them in by that uh, Small Business Saturday, it's the Monday after, to get them submitted. And then you can win uh, a prize, and we have three really awesome prizes. So fill up your passport, yeah. turn it in, and a chance to win yeah. one of three great prizes. Awesome prizes, too. They're all staycations that are really highlighting the local, what we have here. So they're all two-night stays, and then they include gift certificates for attractions and activities and dining. Um, and they're di different themed, too. So there's a fa family-friendly package, um, like a friend getaway yeah. kind of package, yeah. and then like a romantic date night kind of package. So yeah. it's pretty cool. November 3rd through the 25th is what when the dates are for that loyal mm -hmm. to local New Alm holiday passport. Yeah. Very good. Um, you know, you talked about shopping local and uh, Amazon. I, and I'm just, I'm going to mention this because I know we've talked about it before on the radio. Uh, remember, you know, what does Amazon do for your community? Right. Um, you know, they, they don't. Uh, they, they do what they do and online, yes, people do online, but try to shop local as much as you can. It's good. Uh, many years ago, um, when I was on the chamber board, and actually when I was the chairman of the board, my uh, challenge to the members at that time, this is around 1990, was if you spend 2% less out of town and 2% more in town, and you, you, know, you put those numbers together of how many millions of dollars of extra revenue goes into the community. That's one way of looking at it, so a neat thing to do. All right, let's talk about the Parade of Lights because that's a fun one coming up. It is, yes. So it's always held annually the Friday after Thanksgiving, so it's coming up November 24th. Uh, the parade starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, you're going to be uh, commentating, right? For Absolutely, the, for the on, on uh, radio and on New Cat. You yeah. know? So yeah, we'll go on live. Good, good. So we have uh, 60 to 70 units in that parade. Uh, everything's lit, of course. Everyone's in the festive mood. There's just choreographed dancers going through and dogs and just it's a fun, fun family friendly event. That's when we welcome Santa to town officially, right? So he rides in on the historic uh, fire truck at the end of the parade. Of course. Um, the Shell's Hobo Christmas Quartet will also be there ahead of time, entertaining crowds, and they'll be in the and parade. And they're good. That's fun. That's, it's it's neat having fun. them on the street, yeah. Absolutely. And then as soon as the parade concludes, then Santa and the Christmas Hobo Quartet will be going to City Hall, where Mayor Backer is going to do a, an official tree lighting ceremony. Tree lighting ceremony. Yeah. So it's just a really, really nice event, and we definitely want everyone to come. I, and I know uh, I've been involved with the broadcast at Parade almost every year since it started. Wow. Uh, it's um, roughly how many units are in the parade and how long is the parade because people are going to want to know, depending on the weather, well, do I want to be outdoors this long or whatever. But I know you kind of have a handle on that. Yeah, yeah, we limit it to 70 is our max that yeah. we'll do because we want to keep it to an hour because you never know. I mean, I kind of hope that it snows, yeah. but I hope it's not super cold because it just feels really nice, right? But we can't control the weather. That's why we keep it to an hour. And while we do have it on New Cat and it will be on KNUJ, we encourage people to come down and be a part of it. Uh, we've had, I know we've done estimates. I mean, there's a few thousand people that are Absolutely. downtown for this, and mm -hmm. it's really neat. And some of the uh, units, and we do we do have a governor's award for the top unit every year that we, a couple of us, make a decision on. But there's some really great units and choreography I and know. music. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. I, you got to be there. You got to listen. Got to be watching. We'll get it all taken care of. But it's uh, it's fun. It's worth the time. And it's just a neat thing to have in downtown New Ulm. I agree. And then our grand marshals are our business of the year recipients. So New Ulm Real Estate and Christensen Farms will both be the grand marshals of the parade. And then also come down early and grab some dinner beforehand, or stay after and get a drink somewhere. You know, certainly yeah. patronize our businesses as well. Absolutely. And my normal co-host Kim Hansen, she's yes. one of the businesses of the year. She said, I got to ride in the float this year. Yeah. So I am looking for another person to help me <laughs> that day and uh, maybe somebody from the chamber. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Maybe. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, small Business Saturday. So November 25th. Again, we already talked about the importance of small business and uh, this Q4 for that for a lot of our retailers and small businesses is really important. So like we already talked about support them. This is a chance to celebrate all the small businesses that are in our town. So a bunch of the small businesses will, are choosing to offer discounts and promotions that day. And so we'll have a flyer that you can pick up at the chamber or it'll be in the journal and, and, and around town. Um, and so you can go around in that one day, then you can get all, all of your Christmas shopping done and support our small businesses. Very good. Again, Saturday, November 25th, Small Business Saturday, and it's, it's heard, very important. I heard the Grinch is going to be there, too. No. 
Maybe. And maybe even Ooh. handing out chamber dollars. Ooh. Okay. Randomly, all, all at the participating businesses. <clears throat> this so. would be good. This would be good. There you go. Sarah Warmke is with us, President and CEO of New Alton Chamber. Anything else you want to mention before we wrap up this session? Just happy to happy to be here. Lots of stuff going on. How many years for you now? Well, you worked at the chamber, then you were gone, and now how many years as the president and CEO? It, in December, it'll be two years. Keep it up. Got a lot of good things happening. <laughs> I saw a survey come across today about the, yeah. the chamber and what are things you'd like to see and what's going on. You had some great success with uh, uh, things going on, the uh, volleyball that was downtown. Right. And also with uh, Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. And good thing we expanded Oktoberfest that extra block because we never would have fit yeah. record crowds. It was really yeah. great to see. Well, we'll look forward to next year on those as well. Thank Sarah, you. thanks. Appreciate having you here. Thank you. Along with Sarah Wormka from the New Alm Chamber, I'm Jim Bartles, and that's this edition of Something Artsy. Thanks for joining us.